Welcome to How to Fix It. Futurama is one of my favorite shows, and I honestly don't know why. Maybe it's because it's one of a few shows I remember watching with my dad as far back as I can remember, along with King of the Hill and The Simpsons. Or maybe it's because it's one of the greatest animated sitcoms ever produced, at least in my opinion. I remember when it first went off the air, and I never thought I would see new episodes of Futurama again. But then, five years later, Futurama returned with four straight-to-DVD movies. And they were awesome! For the most part. I admit I didn't really like the second outing. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because the other three had stuff going for them. Bender's big score was the triumphant return of Futurama. Bender's game was a fun romp with some shaking up of the status quo. And Into the Wild Green Yonder was the last episode of Futurama. Until Comedy Central brought it back because of how good the sales were on the DVDs. The Beast with a Billion Backs was just... Sort of forgettable. In fact, I don't remember much about it, aside from a few plot details. I know that it won an Annie Award, and that a lot of people probably like it. I just think it's the weakest of the four movies. So, let's take a trip to the world of tomorrow! So we can look at Futurama, The Beast with a Billion Backs. Okay, on the off chance that you've never seen Futurama before, and I don't know why, because it's awesome, I'll fill you in on the show up to this movie. Futurama was a sitcom produced by Matt Groening, who you may know as the guy behind the never-ending animation domination staple, The Simpsons. It revolves around Philip J. Fry, voiced by Billy West, a delivery boy in New York who falls into a cryogenics tube on New Year's Eve 1999 and wakes up a thousand years later in New New York. He gets a job working for his Great Times 30 nephew, Professor Farnsworth, also voiced by West, along with his newfound robot friend Bender, voiced by John DiMaggio, who's a Bender, and one-eyed alien later discovered to be a mutant Tarangalila, voiced by Katie Sagal. Also working for Planet Express are Hermes Conrad, a bureaucrat, voiced by Phil Lamar, Amy Wong, an intern and daughter of rich industrialist, voiced by Lauren Tom, and Dr. John Zoidberg, the company's decapodian doctor and butt of every joke, once again voiced by West. You may recognize him from various internet memes. The show revolved around Fry adjusting to the year 3000, the various suicide delivery missions that the Planet Express crew is sent on, catastrophes that endanger the world that can only be stopped by a delivery company, and Fry on two occasions being the savior of humanity. Now let's get into the movie. Following a rift in the fabric of the universe opening up, due to Bender using a paradox-free time code located on Fry's butt, the universe is keeping watch on what it might do. Also, Fry is going out with a girl named Colleen, voiced by the late Brittany Murphy. Also, also, Amy and Kiff Croker, her schmismar, voiced by Maurice LaMarche, are getting married. Following the wedding, Professor Farnsworth gives everyone some good news, that they are all invited to a scientific conference to discuss the anomaly. Farnsworth wants to send the Planet Express crew to the anomaly to study it, but his rival, Ogden Wernstrom, wants to send his own crew to explore. So they settle who gets to go in the most scientific of ways. A game of Death Ball, which is a giant and deadly version of the marble game Labyrinth. But not before Fry asks to move in with Colleen, making Bender feel lonely and left out. Planet Express wins, and Fry learns that Colleen is apparently polyamorous, as she has four other boyfriends. This makes Fry uncomfortable, but he's convinced by the others that if he loves Colleen, everything will work out. He goes to her and doesn't go on the expedition, where they learn that the anomaly repels all inorganic matter. So Bender, who they sent as a probe, and the Planet Express ship itself, are sent hurtling back to Earth. Bender goes to the robot hospital and is visited by Calculon, his favorite actor, and he decides to become his official stalker. Fry realizes that he's not okay with Colleen's polyamory, and decides that he's so lonely he wants to get away from the universe, and hitches a ride on the Nimbus, Zap Brannigan's ship, where they are planning to mount an attack on the Rift on the order of President of Earth Richard Nixon.
Zap launches a missile prematurely, meaning that Kif is attached to it as it goes off. The missile backfires and kills Kif as Fry crosses the rift and goes to the other universe. Bender also tries to find the supposedly fictional League of Robots, and he does as it's headed by Calculon, who admits him as a member, which cures Bender's loneliness for the time being. Wernstrom and Farnsworth, who had been arrested earlier for protesting Nixon's attack on the Rift, escape from prison with the help of Pazuzu, and try to warn Nixon that something is coming through the Rift. The universe then comes under siege by various tentacles that exist on the other side of the rift. Oh, so this is another one of Atomic Robo's shadows from beyond time. Just get Robo, Carl Sagan's, and Nikola Tesla's heads together and they'll find a way out of this. Or, since they're purple, just send a nerd and his friends through time to stop them. Farnsworth wants to cover the world in a dome made of Daimondium, his patented unbreakable substance. Meanwhile, Wernstrom wants to use Diamondilium, his own version. The point is moot because nothing from this universe can harm the tentacles, so neither of their unbreakable substances are worth a damn. The people try to fend off the tentacles, but one of the tentacles opens up and spits out Fry, who tells everyone that the tentacles just wants to love and be loved by everyone in the universe. The tentacles assimilate everyone, and Fry becomes the Pope of the Church of the Tentacle. The tentacles get the entire Planet Express crew, save for Leela and Amy, who escape and meet up with Zap Brannigan, who is also on the run from the tentacles, and they get help from Bender, which damages his reputation in the League, since their motto is kill all humans. He gets his reputation back by fighting a duel with Calculon, and when Calculon resigns, gives the presidency to Bender. The three humans flee to an abandoned cabin in the woods, and in a moment of weakness and sadness about Kith, Amy sleeps with Zap. Zap and Amy are caught by the tentacles, and Leela escapes, but eventually ends up at the church with a tentacle in her neck. Fry introduces the owner of the tentacles, Yivo, a being from the other universe, who doesn't use traditional pronouns, but rather uses Skli, Sklim, and Sklur. Yivo introduces Sklim self, and explains that Skli had seen Universe Gamma's beginnings, and wanted to meet it, being lonely, but couldn't until the rift opened and met Fry, also lonely, and they decided to get rid of loneliness together. Leela suddenly attacks Yivo, having used a purple garden hose as a fake tentacle, and proclaims that Yivo isn't actually loving them, but mating with them, as the tentacles are actually genticles. Everyone is disgusted, and Yivo tries to explain Sklimself, but no one is having it, and Amy proclaims her anger that Yivo's actions led to Kif's death, and as a show of good faith, Yivo resurrects Kif, and Zap immediately tells him about him having slept with Amy. Yivo begs for another chance and pulls the tentacles out, giving everyone the choice of being with Sklim. The universe goes on a date with Yivo, and the universe debates breaking it off, because Yivo shows no sign of commitment. Fry and a few others go to break the news in person in a wooden spaceship, and Bender decides that since Fry is neglecting him, the robots are taking over the planet, and gets an army of the damned from the robot devil. He goes to confront the White House, but when they went over to Yivo, Sklee proposed, and the organic beings of the universe are moving in. Yivo sends down golden escalators, and everyone is brought up to Yivo's head, which looks like heaven. Even Leela, who isn't keen on the idea. Yivo lets them stay on the condition that they never try to contact other universes, which they agree to. Leela still isn't happy, but then again, she didn't like Country Bear Jamboree. Fry writes Bender a letter, and Leela finally concedes and starts to accept Yivo. But Yivo is under attack. Bender has taken a bunch of ships and sends harpoons into Yivo to drag Shkli into the regular universe. But Yivo realizes that Bender can hurt Shklim because of the letter Fry sent being made of the only matter that can harm Yivo. Yivo realizes that Fry broke his promise and kicks the universe out, sending them all back to Universe Gamma, save for Colleen, who is the only human who understands Yivo. Bender picks up Fry, and they all set course for home. Fry decides to find love closer to home and goes to Leela, who isn't interested, and then Amy, who says that she's with Kif, but Kif isn't happy that she slept with Zap. Farnsworth and Wernstrom go back to their old rivalry, and Bender hugs Fry and Leela, saying that there's no great love without great jealousy, and the movie ends. 
Well, it's Futurama, so all the jokes are pretty funny. Futurama's jokes are always great, and this movie is no exception. Plus, the main plot of Yivo and the Tentacles is pretty suspenseful and interesting. It's sort of like a zombie movie where everyone starts to turn. Yivo is also sort of similar to the Borg, with the initial assimilation and using Fry as a spokesperson, similar to Picard becoming Locutus in Star Trek. It's also nice seeing those who weren't normally allies working together, like Leela and Zapp, and Farnsworth and Wernstrom. I also admit that the idea of a being that dates an entire universe is kind of fascinating. It definitely feels like a Futurama episode, with all the staples, including an awesome guest cast with Brittany Murphy, who was a very good voice actress as Luann on King of the Hill, and David Cross, who is a very funny actor, and definitely gives Jivo a little something extra that wouldn't have been there if it had been anyone else. It also means that both main cast members from Mr. Show have guested on Futurama, since Bob Odenkirk was in the Y of Fry as Chaz, the mayor's aide. Plus, they have Stephen Hawking playing himself, which admittedly wasn't so impressive since he had already done that back in Anthology of Interest 1, but still, it's Stephen Hawking. I'm also happy that Kiff didn't stay dead, since he's one of my favorite characters. Other than that, I don't have much to say. Oh, um, we'll be right back. And we're back. Well, frankly, other than the forgettable nature of the movie, there's one thing I find a little bit uncomfortable. Yibo raped everyone in the universe save for robots and Leela. Yeah, like Leela said, the tentacles were used for mating. And since the tentacles were non-consensually sticking themselves in everyone, they were technically performing rape. And it's never addressed, save for the scene when Leela tells everyone. I mean, this is like someone dating their rapist. It's just a little squicky. It's not like Yivo is the Borg where consent is irrelevant, or some non sentient tentacle species that doesn't realize what it's doing. Yivo knew full well that Sklee was performing the act of rape, and even though Sklee apologized, no one is the least bit concerned about it after the initial shock went off. I mean, they were violated. I know it's not a big deal, but this really bothered me. But whatever, there are other problems. Lots of bits feel rushed, like they had a whole bunch of ideas for the first movie, couldn't use them and just shove them all into this movie, leaving no time for development. I mean, the tentacles don't show up until about 45 minutes in, and the whole part where they're on Yivo is within the last 15 minutes. Everything else feels like filler. Also, the Bender plot jumps all over the place. First it's Stalker, then it's League of Robots, all within the plot of missing Fry and feeling neglected. I liked it better in the previous movie where Bender had a continuous plot that didn't jump around. And this is obvious, but Fry and Leela aren't together, and the movie is reaching for reasons to keep them apart, despite the fact that in the previous movie they basically proved that Leela's one true love was Fry. Spoilers for Bender's big score. In that movie, Leela gets together with a man named Lars Fillmore, who she says is the only man she'll ever love. At the end of the movie, it's revealed that Lars is actually a time duplicate of Fry, who went back to 1999 and lived his life for an extra decade, and then realized that he was Lars and went back to be with Leela. Fry is the only man she'll ever love, and I know that that Fry had 10 years of maturity and experience that the normal Fry doesn't have, but why wouldn't they still be together? Futurama post Devil's Hands had that issue, because once they got together, they never stayed together, I guess for drama or something. The movie just feels like a bunch of subplots shoved into one episode. It should be called The Movie with a Billion Plots. The Calculon Stalker subplot, League of Robots, Colleen stuff, Kiff dying and Amy sleeping with Zap, Bender being sad, Bender taking back humanity, etc. They really take away from the Yivo stuff, sort of how all the various subplots in To Kill a Mockingbird distract from the main plot. 
Man, that's three episodes in a row I've mentioned that book. I've got to find some new reference material. But the point still stands. There's a reason the film adaptation trimmed the fat. Contrastly, the previous movie, Bender's Big Score, was mostly a continuous plot. Their party leads to meeting Lars, then to the nude beach planet, which leads to the scammers and the time code, and the scammers drive the rest of the plot. This movie doesn't really have anything driving its plot other than the rift in the background and enabling Evo to make contact. It's a good movie, it's just sort of a clusterfuck of subplots. Other than that, the movie's not bad, just forgettable. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it! Fix it! Fix it! Fix it! Fix it! I'd start with condensing the plot a little bit, because really, Bender's subplots take too much away from the main plot. Not that I don't like Bender, I love him, but his stuff jumps around so much I couldn't keep track of what he was doing. I'd just condense it to the League of Robots stuff and leave out the Calculon Stalker stuff. Also, I'd trim the fat of the subplots other than Bender, since Amy sleeping with Zap does basically nothing for the plot, since Kiff and Amy get back together anyway. And I'd address the fact that Evo raped everyone in the universe. I mean, they just started dating Sklim afterwards, and no one except for Leela, who wasn't actually raped by Evo, has any problem with it. Also, I just cut out the middlemen and put Fry and Leela together, at least at the end, because we all know they're destined to be together, so why make us wait to see it happen? The movie is fine, it just needs some trimming of extraneous stuff so that the pacing and flow are uninterrupted. The Beast with a Billion Backs. And that was Futurama The Beast with a Billion Backs. Was it good? Eh, it was okay, if a bit uncomfortable. I can see why people would like it, it's a decent episode of the show, but it's kind of forgettable and not my cup of tea. While I still think Futurama doesn't have bad episodes, it does have less than stellar episodes, and this is definitely one of them. As a movie, it's fine, but as a four-part episode, which is how I first experienced it, the pacing is all over the place, and it's not a movie I can say that I have a burning desire to rewatch. All the voice actors do their jobs well, and no one feels like they phoned it in. Considering that at the time it was made, it was probably going to be one of the last episodes of the show. The jokes are fine, it's just the weakest of the four in my opinion. But it's Futurama, and I do have to recommend it. Although I recommend the other three movies a little bit more. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more of How to Fix It, you can hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or complaints about the video, you can put those in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, share with your friends and share it around the internet. And maybe consider supporting the show on Patreon. I'm gonna go try not to get knocked into a cryogenics tube, and I'll see you next time.